Installing Ubuntu Server as a VM in Hyper-V, let's go. Jump on over to ubuntu.com forward slash download. Select Server and then download the most recent version. I'll speed this up a little. Right, now that it's downloaded, we can verify the file integrity. Clicking here reveals this SHA-256 checksum. All we have to do is check that the hash of the file we just downloaded matches this. I prefer to do this in the Windows terminal. First, CD into the Downloads folder, or wherever you downloaded the ISO image to. I'm just going to list the file contents of this folder so that I can see the name of the downloaded ISO. Next, run the command get file hash, followed by the file name. Notice that I didn't manually type the entire file name. A handy feature in the terminal is the ability to autocomplete by pressing the tab key. Simply start typing the file name and then press the tab key to autocomplete. Next, it's just a case of comparing the hash on the website against the hash we generated. If they match, then the file integrity is good. Right. I'll get rid of this and create the virtual machine that I'll install Ubuntu on. To create a virtual machine, right-click the Windows host. So for me, that's this here, which is called Home Lab. Then select New and select Virtual Machine. The new virtual machine wizard then opens. To proceed, click Next. Here is where you assign a name to the VM. I'll call mine Ubuntu Server. I'm going to click Store the virtual machine in a different location. Whilst this step is not strictly necessary, I prefer to keep my VMs and virtual disks organized in a folder called Hyper-V. So I'll store this VM in a folder called Ubuntu Server that is inside of the folder Hyper-V. Copy this path as we'll use it later on. Click Next. The machine generation you select depends on the operating system you want to install. Generation 1 supports a wide range of operating systems, while Generation 2 supports most 64-bit versions of Windows and more recent versions of Linux. Generation 2 also supports UEFI, Secure Boot, and TPM. As I don't require any of these features, I'm going to leave this VM set to Generation 1, then click Next. Here is where the amount of memory is assigned to the VM. I'm going to leave this set to 4 GB. Be mindful that the host machine will need enough free RAM for any guest VMs to run. Click Next. Here is where we define which virtual network switch this VM is going to be connected to. I'll connect this VM to my V switch, which I created in a previous video. This V switch is connected to a physical network via my Windows host machine's USB to Ethernet adapter. Click Next. Here we define the location where the VM's virtual hard disk should be saved. So I'm going to paste in the file path that I copied earlier. Note the disk size is currently set to 127 gigabytes. Hyper-V won't create a file of this size on the host machine. Instead, it will create a small file that will grow in size as files get written to the virtual disk by the VM. One benefit of this is that you won't fill your host machine storage with large, almost empty virtual disks. One downside of over-provisioning like this is a VM can think it has a lot more capacity than is actually available on the host machine. Click Next. As I've already downloaded the Ubuntu installation ISO image, I'll select Install an operating system from a bootable CD slash DVD ROM and then browse to the location of the ISO file and select it. Click Next. A summary of the VM is then shown. Click Finish to create the VM. Before I power on the VM, there are a few things I need to tweak. Right-click the VM and select Settings. Here we can see the boot order. The CD drive is first, which is what we need to boot from the ISO image. Next to check is the processor. Here you can see that Hyper-V has automatically assigned 10 virtual processors to this VM. What you decide to choose here depends on how powerful the VM needs to be and how much resources the host computer has. If I leave this at 10, then it will use 50% of my host computer's CPU resources. So I am going to reduce the number of virtual processors. With just two virtual processors, 
you can see this is just 10% of my host machine's CPU resources. The final setting I like to change is in checkpoints. I prefer to turn off Use Automatic Checkpoints. This way, a checkpoint is only ever created if I manually create one. Click Apply and then OK. Great, we're now ready to power on the VM and install Ubuntu Server. Right-click the Ubuntu Server VM and select Connect. This will open up a kind of virtual monitor. Next, click Start to power on the VM. You'll need to click in this virtual monitor so that the VM takes the keystrokes from your keyboard. Select Try or Install Ubuntu Server. To select, you'll need to press the Enter key on your keyboard. I'm going to maximize this so that the bottom isn't cropped off. Select your language, so for me that's English UK. I'll leave the keyboard layout set to English UK, but change according to your needs. I'll leave these settings to default. On this screen, you can define the network settings. For a server, I'd recommend that you define a fixed IP address. But for this video, I'm just going to leave the default setting of DHCP. In my network setup, I have no proxy server, so we'll leave this blank. After this screen has finished reading package lists, you can progress to the next screen. Leaving these settings as default will use the entire virtual disk for Ubuntu. Next, you are presented with a summary of the storage configuration. So just proceed and at the warning, select Continue. Enter your name, a name for the server, a username, and enter your desired password twice. I'm not enabling Ubuntu Pro, so we'll leave Skip for now selected and continue. Since I want to connect to my Ubuntu server from other machines on my network without having to access my Hyper-V host, I'll enable SSH and I recommend that you do the same too. For my simple setup, I'm not going to bother installing any of these server snaps. Now it's just a case of waiting for the install to complete, so I'll speed this up a little. When the installation is complete, select Reboot Now. Check that the virtual DVD drive is empty. And then within the virtual monitor, press the Enter key on your keyboard. The VM then restarts and boots to the installed Ubuntu server OS. You can either sign in via this virtual monitor or you can create an SSH connection to the server. As I intend on accessing my Ubuntu server from a different machine on my network, I'll show you how to connect to it using SSH in the Windows terminal. Open terminal and type SSH, then a space followed by the IP address of the VM. So for me, that's 192.168.199.106, then a space minus L space, and then the username defined during the installation. So for me, that's Home Lab. The first time you connect to the VM, Windows will give you a warning about the authenticity of the host as its fingerprint isn't known by Windows. Typing yes will save the fingerprint so that you won't receive this message next time. Next, you'll be prompted for the password. So enter the password defined during the installation. And now I'm connected via SSH to my Ubuntu server VM. Let's do a simple ping to check that the VM can reach the internet. So ping 8.8.8.8. .8 and yes, I get a reply. Control C to quit the ping. Let's ping a domain name now to check that the name can be resolved. So ping bbc.co.uk. And yes, that's also working. And again, Control C to quit the ping. When you want to shut down the VM, you can either type in the appropriate command on the console line, or you can shut it down from within Hyper-V Manager by right-clicking the VM and selecting Shut Down.
Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to catch more home lab tutorials.